in this question p mos transistor which current source amplifier is given to us and the biasing current of that p mos transistor is decided by current mirror pair circuit this current mirror pair circuit is one ratio one which means the current of third transistor or you can say drain current of third transistor will be same as current of second transistor and you can see this first transistor and second transistor are in series so current of second transistor will be same as current of first transistor so in this circuit we can see this 150 microampere current is flowing through third transistor the same current will flow through second transistor and same current will flow through first transistor so we can write here as id1 is equal to id2 is equal to id3 which will be equal to 150 microampere in this question first of all we need to find out trans conductance of first transistor so for trans conductance we can use two type of formulas first one is square root 2 mu n cox w by l id but in this question uh, this mu n cox is not given to us and w by l is also not given so obviously we cannot use this formula but we have a different formula which is given by 2 id divided by vob if we need to find out trans conductance of the first transistor which is pmos transistor then we can write gm1 is equal to 2 id1 divided by vo1 so id1 and vo1 is already given to us id1 is 150 microampere divided by vo1 vo1 is 0.54 m1 transistor so this will be 4 115 into 4 600 so gm will be 0.6 into 10 to the power minus 3 ampere per volt now next we need to find out go1 and go2 of first and second transistor so first one is our pmos transistor so go1 will be 1 upon R O 1 and 1 upon R O 1 is given as 1 upon lambda lambda of P M O S divided by multi sorry multiplied by I D 1 so ultimately we can write it as lambda P I D 1 lambda P is given as for P M O S it is given as 0.05 and I D 1 is 150 microampere. so we can write go1 as 7.5 into 10 to the power minus 6 so this symbol is called as mho mho or you can write it as simple siemens s similarly we can find out go2 as 1 upon r02 so second transistor is our n mos transistor so we have to use lambda n instead of p mos or lambda p so it will be lambda n id2 lambda n is given as 0.1 and it is 150 microampere so here go2 will be 1 not 150 15 into 10 to the power minus 6. No. So these are the answers for GO1 and GO2. Now in next part we need to find out V out by V in and R out. R out. So to find out voltage gain which is given by v out by v in and r out we need to draw the small signal equivalent circuit of this complete circuit so let's move to the next part so to draw the small signal equivalent circuit what we have to do is we can replace this complete circuit by its thevenin resistance at this point so to find to find out thevenin resistance at this point we have to remove this transistor from the circuit 
and we need to connect a voltage source let's say that voltage source is v0 and we have to assume a current i0 that is flowing into the circuit through voltage source v0 and we have to remove our dc voltage and current sources so when we are connecting this dc voltage source with current i0 then we have to remove this biasing current as you can see when we remove this biasing current this gate terminal will be uh, will not be connected to any point which means at this point you will be getting infinite resistance if you are getting infinite resistance at this point then the resistance at this point will be only output resistance of m2 transistor which will be equal to ro2 so ultimately what we can do is we can replace this complete circuit by output resistance of second transistor only so now our circuit will reduce to instead of drawing drawing uh, a small signal model of full circuit now we need to only draw the small signal model of this reduce the circuit so we can draw it now so to draw the small signal equivalent circuit your vdd will be short circuit now gmbgs then we have ro2 ro2 is connected between drain terminal and ground of emos transistor so this is the drain terminal and we have ground so between drain and ground we have ro2 and we also have output resistance of m1 transistor between drain terminal and ground terminal because this vdd will be short circuited to ground so ultimately we will be having ro1 parallel to ro2 and at this point we have to take our output so as you can see this ro2 and ro1 both are in uh, parallel so we can uh, replace these two resistors by a single resistance With equivalent resistance as RO1 parallel RO2. So as you can see, this input side is having VGS, and you can write this VGS as VG minus VS, which will be equal to V in minus zero equal to V in. So from output side, you can see this GM VGS current is flowing through RO1 parallel RO2 resistors, but we are taking keeping plus sign here so we can write v out as minus gm vgs ro1 parallel ro2 so from first equation we can put vgs as v in into this equation so now our equation will be minus gm ro1 parallel ro2 multiplied by v in so v out by v in will be minus gm gm is gm1 transconductance of first transistor gm1 ro1 parallel ro2 so we have already calculated gm1 and ro1 will be equal to 1 by 0 1 and ro2 will be equal to 1 by go2 so it will be equal to 1 upon lambda n id 1 1 upon lambda p lambda p id 1 this will be lambda n id 2 and we can put all the values and ultimately our answer will answer will be 26.67 
ampere per volt. So we can put the values of GM1, RO1 and RO2 and our final answer will be minus 26.67 ampere per volt. Now we need to find out output resistance of the this complete amplifier. So to find out output resistance of the amplifier, what we have to do is we have to connect a uh, DC voltage source at the output terminal and we have to short circuit short circuited our input voltage source. So let's connect a voltage source here. And we have to remove this input voltage source and we have to connect this gate terminal to ground potential. As you can see from input side, source terminal is already grounded. Now the gate terminal is also grounded. So VGS will be zero. So when VGS is zero, this GM VGS current is zero. So we know that when any current source value is zero, it can be treated as open circuit. So this VGS is zero, this current source value is zero. Now we can treat this VGS current source as open circuit. So from output side, we can see that this I0 current that is coming out of this V0 voltage source will flow through only RO1 parallel RO2. So we can write VO as RO1 parallel RO2 multiplied by I0. So from this equation V0 by I0 which is nothing but your R out will be equal to RO1 parallel RO2. So we already know the values of RO1 and RO2 and we can put those values and we can determine the value of output resistance as 44.5 low ohm. So that's it for this question. Thank you for watching.